All right, y'all, so this week's outcome measure of the week is the trunk impairment scale, or you might have heard it be referred to as the TIS. So this is a great outcome measure. It's on the ANPT EDGE document for uh, the stroke population and the MS population, and I'm pretty sure it's on the traumatic brain injury population EDGE document as well. So then we know that it's going to be something that we want to be familiar with. It's also required for entry-level uh, physical therapist education is to be familiar with the TIS. And it's a, a great outcome measure because it allows us to not only kind of objectify and quantify trunk movement and trunk ability, but it also allows us to take some more subjective information in terms of quality of movement and their effectiveness of movement and how they're actually moving and put it into objective data that we can uh, track over time and use to measure progress. So there's 17 items uh, separated throughout three sections. The first section looks at static sitting balance, the second section looks at dynamic sitting balance, and the third section looks at coordination of the trunk. And basically it allows us to score not only do they accomplish the task of you know lateral bending or, or um, rotation of the shoulders depending on which section, but it also there is sc scoring criteria built in for evaluating their quality of movement, so that's kind of nice. And there aren't necessarily cutoff values or anything like that for this measure. However, there are normative values and it's something that we can really use to help track change over time, especially in patients that we're working on trunk control and postural control and things like that with. So that's the outcome measure of the week this week, the trunk impairment scale. And I'm gonna play a quick video now of me kind of performing it on my co-resident, Jessica and she's gonna you know, not necessarily get a perfect score and we'll kind of go over how I scored it on certain parts. All right, so now we're going to uh, demonstrate the trunk impairment scale. It's a great scale to use for anybody with postural instability or with patients post-stroke. And we have Jessica acting as our patient. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna see how she sits there in quiet sitting for 10 seconds. I'll be here to guard her a little bit. Doing okay? Just itchy forehead. Okay. So 10 seconds has gone by, she's doing good. So the second item is we're going to take their stronger leg or their less involved leg and we're going to put it up onto their knee. So Jessica, I'm just gonna bring this leg up over your knee, okay? I want you to try and stay balanced for okay. me. Okay. From here, bring it up. And we're just gonna hold that for a little bit. So then we'll hold this for 10 seconds. Doing okay? Okay. So 10 seconds has gone by, roughly anyway. We'll bring it back down. So now I want you to do the same thing. Can you bring that leg over this knee? Good. You hold it there, feeling okay? Yep. She's totally crushing it, doesn't need any support or compensations, which I'll talk about after the video. Now she's got some compensation a little bit. Okay. In case she falls off. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, Jessica, I want you to just kind of follow my movements, okay? Okay. So we're just going to bend down and touch that right elbow onto the table. Good. And then come back up. Okay. And we're going to do that two more times. So the first time we're looking to see if she can do it or not. Second time, really try and get crunched on on this side and touch the side. Good. And come back up. And we're going to do it one more time. And can you try and just come back up without pushing into the table? It's a little, little, little tougher. A little tougher. I'll give you a hand there, okay. Right. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So kind of match me, come down, touch, good, back up. A little easier on that side it looks like, good. Yeah. A couple more times, and one more. Good, one more slow and control all the way down and back up, good. And if your patient was severe, had some more severe impairments, you know, you could be right in here kind of... Don't roll over your patient's yeah. toes. Did though. I hit your foot? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> kind of rolling up, um, guarding while you're kind of going to the side, and then come back up, and I can do the same thing on this side. She's obviously healthy, so just to give you a little bit better visual, I'm going to kind of stay back here. Feeling okay? Yep. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I want you to kind of lift this right hip up almost like you're on the potty and you gotta go to clean yourself. So kind of lift that hip, good, and back down. We're gonna do it one more time, and good. So for the first one with that, we're kind of looking at the quality of her trunk movement, and then the second one, we're looking at if she uses any compensations. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, so bring that left hip up, good, 
and left hip up again. Good. So now we are moving on to some rotations. So I'm going to ask you if you can rotate your shoulders forward six times. Good. And one more. Good. And relax. So then with that one, we're kind of looking at her symmetry and ability to do that. And then the second time we do it, we're going to ask her to do it within six seconds, so a little bit quicker. And good. And I would have a stopwatch going if I was concerned with her getting not being able to do it in six seconds. So then the last part of the test is we're gonna do the same thing with the lower trunk, with the pelvis, kind of rotating that pelvis forward, good. And six, good. And then you do the same thing again, uh, again once within six seconds, kind of looking at the symmetry. And if you really wanted to make sure that you're guarding, you can kind of put your knees in front of theirs to make sure they don't slide themselves off the table. And go ahead. Good. And she's totally crushing it because she's unimpaired. So we'll kind of go over the scoring for how she performed on that. And that's a little bit of a, a quick look at what it might look like performing the trunk impairment scale in clinic. Cards. So the trunk impairment scale, it is available through the abstract of an article. I'll link the article down below and I'll put the link on the video here. And that's this week's outcome measure of the week. Hopefully you find it helpful and start to use it in your practice, the trunk impairment scale. Thanks for watching.